are we doing? We're good? Yes. <laughs> Any questions? Yes. Um, so you started by talking about how you normally play and give presentations like this to university students. How do they normally react to these presentations? I mean, they're obviously already in a class. Leave me your email address. I'll send you the link to a video uh, that we made of some of the students' reactions. Right. Some of them are open mouth like, uh, like this, and some of them are sitting there busy texting. <laughs> the ones in the back, you know, <laughs> hard to reach. I have to bear in mind that, um, uh, you know, f uh, for a lot of university <coughs> students, courses on world music is an elective that they take for credits. So they say, see a list of, you know, elective courses, and they say, "Well, that looks like it's not too boring. Let's, <laughs> let's check that out." And then, the, and then the teacher makes them listen to, uh, you know, some obscure tribe from Ghana or something like that, and they go, "Why did I sign up for this?" Uh, but then that's why they they drag me in there to try to shake them <laughs> up a little. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, the reactions usually pretty gratifying. I, I get, they, they often ask, well, when they're music majors, then it gets really interesting. Then these are musicians, that's, this is their life, that's what they care about. I've gotten some letters saying that, you know, listening to this kind of music changed their whole approach to music. Yes, we have time for questions. Anybody? Do the auxiliaries have the size as well? Yes, of course. Size? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because yeah, those are my three favorites, the car size and Yes, I have a size. Yes, but that's a whole different tradition. Yeah, absolutely. Music is completely different. More like Indian. No, it's like uh, Azerbaijani saws. Remember what the what it's for? It's for accompanying the the minstrel, the bard, the storyteller. He's telling epic legend, legends. He's telling. Sometimes these stories go on so long they have to meet again the next day to hear the end. You know, sort of like damages. You know, what's going to happen? And they accompanied themselves on this instrument. It's a it's a relatively simple instrument with simple melodic construction, but the stories are complex. You know, they're legends, mm -hmm. myths, tales. Sometimes they'll discuss, like they'll hit on philosophical themes. Someone f may may actually challenge an ashok and say, you know, hey ashok, what's the meaning of life? And then he'll have to, you know, uh, ex ex spontaneously improvise some, you know, some kind of philosophy for, for the listener. Did you have a question? Yeah, I have a question about please. the instruments yes, and please. The, the building of the instruments. Uh, is there a, uh, a similar tradition as in, let's say, Western Europe with violins, that they can be 200 years old and that their sound is very specific and, and, and very refined, and that there are very uh, precise prescriptions on how to treat the wood and, and so on and so on? Is, is there a similar um, sophistication in the building of instruments? Not the sophistication in building them, yes. There's the, the you know precise building is required. You can't you can't. I mean, one can make a sloppy kamancha or a sloppy tar. I mean, there are there's a wide range of qualities in these instruments. Uh, these are pretty good. The ones that I have are I won't say they're the best, but they're pretty good. Uh, I once went to a uh, a violin maker and repairman in in Manhattan when I lived in New York City because I wanted to get some horse hair. For, for, and our bows are quite different. And I saw his display case, and I saw all these violin bows, bows, not violin, just bows, and they ranged from like like a hundred dollars to like twenty thousand dollars for a bow. And I was, you know, I was mesmerized by this. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "What's what's the difference?" He said, "Really, very little. But when you play the violin well, you need that difference. You know, you you'll appreciate that difference, and you're going to pay for it." I said, well, I just need some horse here for this ratty old thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I took that $20,000 bow and I, played the, I tried to play the Comanche. That. It just didn't sound good at all. It was very thin and reedy. This has bite, you know. And this is, this is a good uh, bow because I can adjust the tension with my hand. When you're playing this way, you cannot, you cannot do that. You have one tension here. You can attack the string differently, you know, or, you know. But this, you can actually modulate the volume by, by tensing and relaxing the, the, as you play. And it's, it becomes instinctive. In the beginning, it's, it's kind of like learning to drive a car with a stick shift. You know, you just have to know how to clutch and shift and brake and gas at the same time and steer. 
and then it all just folds together. It becomes like one. You see how like when I play, there's, there's I don't even know I have fingers anymore. You know, it's just one thing. Do the instruments get better when they when they age? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. But there's there's a kind of a, a patina about an old instrument that's enjoyable. I've seen some really fine brand new instruments in Baku. They're making great instruments now. Very precision. You know, like like as if they studied with a violin maker to get everything exact. You know, the, the grain of the wood goes this way and all that stuff. Uh, but again, this does this this acoustics of these kind of skin face instruments are entirely different. They don't depend on an arched piece of wood to vibrate in harmony with the other parts. Uh, so you know, it's a, it's it's a, a it's got a membrane here, and by the way, you see the shape. You probably recognize that it looks like the, uh, a slightly flattened dome of a mosque. You know, we associate that onion shape with uh, with Islam, but the sh the concept of that shape predates Islam, and has nothing to do with architectural aesthetics. Although that follows now, you know, it's a recognize. Oh, I see that reminds me of you know Islamic architecture. Of course, there's an association now, but in the beginning, it was purely acoustics. And it's all based on the same geometry that we currently use for satellite dishes. Parabolic curvature. These are, this is a parabola, parabolic arch. You, can't, you, you see this point here? Imagine one here. That's the second focal point. And it's 360 degrees rotated around that parabola. And the tar has 10 parabolas in it, all kind of angling towards each other. So it's a, a, a merger of the ergonomics of how human beings' arms and hands work with a pick and the parabolic... Uh, and only Azerbaijani tar has that, by the way. No other instrument has that. That's why this little guy has such incredible projection. So I'll just show off a little bit of sound here. Look at this little guy. Because of the acoustics of, of the shape of the, the and, and the, par the parabolas, if you want to, if you have some eye for geometry, there's here's the axis of this parabola, and here's this, the symmetrical one. Then there's this guy. See the parabola here, the arch. Inside, it's carved like that, and then it has to meet the second chamber. It's very, very precise. People say, why did they make it? Is it? Why is it made this way? It's a, it's an ideal. Uh, in in in. Uh, Acoustical instrument that you can hold in your hands like this. Is that uh, the guitar? Is the idea for the guitar the shape? Uh, the I had heard. Guitar? I had heard a story that I like very much about that. That the uh, the the uh, guitar came from Andalusia, of course, uh -huh. and the Andalusians came from Rajasthan. How they get to how they get to Andalusia from Rajasthan? If you look at the map, it goes right through the Caucasus. So uh, I heard that, that the word guitar is the contraction for gitano tar. Because gitano was what they called themselves. More oud? More what? More oud. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a request. <laughs> Do we have time? Marty? Oh, yeah, totally. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thanks for asking. <laughs> I enjoyed it too. I played that one a lot. The instruments are, um, just to answer your question, because I didn't finish answering, you probably you asked about the construction. This instrument is made out of walnut. The bowl, the finger uh, board, and the pegs are made are from turn and a lathe out of walnut. And there's a metal rod that runs through, which is what, which is what uh, uh, resists the tension of the strings. So because of that, the musicologists classify this as a spike fiddle, uh, because there are spike fiddles all over the place, all throughout the the, uh, you know, Middle East, Central Asia, etc. And uh, actually in Afghanistan they have one called the Gichak, which uh, the soundboard is made out of a, uh, an empty gasoline can. And it, it sounds incredibly good. <laughs> so, you know, when you ask about, you know, the finesse of the Western instruments, uh, you can get amazingly rich sounds out of a piece of tin. You know, with, 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 you know, and the right attitude. <laughs> it's all you do all day long from dawn to dusk for 70 years. You go like this, it's going to eventually going to get, that stone is going to get so polished. You know, it's going to be pretty smooth. <laughs>